is Women's Month, and on top of celebrating, we are learning today how to woman up. We are joined now by Dr. Tracy Weiland. She's an author. And Tracy, I want to start with the first question. Uh, being about 2015, you said that this is really going to be the year for women. Why is that? You, you know, women are in the news every single day, whether it's business issues, whether it's our opportunities, it's new businesses, whether it's politics. This is the year that everyone is talking about women and things are going to happen. And so what does it mean to woman up? Well, you know what I looked at? I looked at all generations of women this year, our young generation, our mid-age mid, mid -age generation, and our older women to see what kind of trends are they setting. And it was all very positive and very unique in different areas. So what are some of the things that you are noticing for women? What should we be trying to do this year when it comes to our careers? Well, number one, you know, women are starting businesses at one and a half times the rate of the national average. Women own over 9.1 million businesses. And they're in all areas. I mean, 25% of franchises are owned by women. So women are actually looking at opportunities, not only in the corporation, but also outside of the corporation. And I find that very positive. What about when it comes to things like uh, different job opportunities uh, within your own company, pay raises, uh, opportunities for advancement? I think this is a very good year. Uh, number one, the jobs report just came out again, and we've had positive news. People are optimistic. Look inside your firm, see what opportunities are there, because everybody's talking about women, wages, and promotions. So get on board and look for opportunities inside your firm. And if there aren't any there, maybe this is the year for you to start thinking about outside the firm. Always do it while you're working, but maybe it's time for you to explore your next promotion or opportunity uh, lateral move inside and outside the firm. What about when it comes to uh, the job field? Are more companies looking specifically for women? How are they kind of diversifying their workforce? Well, you know, every CEO has made a headline this year and last year just saying we need to do something. And it all started with Google having a, you know, analyzing their own company and saying, you know what, we're not doing enough for women. The numbers are off. And then other companies signed up, Microsoft, Intel, and said, you know, we have to start doing things internally and start funding it. That signals to me that the opportunities could be enormous for women. Mm -hmm. So get on board and start looking. And in fact, some of these CEOs have made some uh, pretty big missteps when it comes to how they've been speaking about women in the workplace. Yes. Yeah, so last year we had a, you know the situation with Microsoft CEO, you know, saying that women should trust their judgment and believe in karma to get ahead, and he's had to retract that. And that now Microsoft has a big diversity program in place. So this this is just one example of how firms are calling, really becoming more transparent and bringing the issues to a head. This is all good news for women because you can take advantage of these opportunities. And you say that women of all ages are minding their own business. What exactly do you mean by that? So women are starting businesses. Our, our young women, that's what I said. I'm so excited about our young women. They're starting businesses at the rate of 1,200 per day. Now, last year was seven, 740 per day. So younger women are seeing, seeing and getting excited about being entrepreneurs. That's exciting to me because women, when you create businesses, you're in more control and you can hire more women and ultimately the pipeline will increase. So I'm very excited that women not only owning businesses, but they're starting businesses and they're making movement in, their, uh, in other companies. And we're seeing a huge growth in franchise, uh, women owned franchises. Yes, you know, everyone used to just think of women in real estate franchises, but women actually own a number of franchises, and a lot of it is, you know, education franchises, um, spas, salons, athletics, you know, there's a lot of franchises that people don't realize that there's a woman behind it. And again, that's business ownership, and that's, that's another venue for women to explore as they're looking in for different changes. And when you talk about uh, women starting their own businesses, you're particularly excited about the age group of women under 30. What are we seeing in that category? 
You know what I get very excited about, because I live out in Silicon Valley, is the number of tech startups that these young women are creating. And that, that to me is a signal that not only is it just social media startups, but it's everything from security startups, um, sli you know, SlideShare. There's a number of different tech startups that women are pursuing. And they're, they're in the game. They're in all the sectors. In fact, women are advancing in eight out of the 13 startup sectors. And, and that's, that's a great change, and that means a great future. And they're outperforming men. Then, yes, so there's been a lot of research done on women's startups, and they're finding that women uh, don't take as, they take risks, but they don't take uh, uncalculated risks, and they're outperforming male startups, which is exciting. All right, let's talk a little bit about women in politics. We're starting to see the headlines uh, about who is going to be running for president and, you know, women trying to take more uh, control of the different the seats in different houses and what are we noticing uh, about this year for women in politics? So women are going to be the dinner conversation this year. So next year is the big presidential election. Whether you hear Hillary uh, Clinton's name, are you for her, are you against her, you hear Elizabeth Warren, you hear Carly Fiorina. We have more women in the House and the Senate than before. And it's going to be, you know, is the first time that the topic of the conversation when it comes down to politics, it's all about women. And, and so that to me means continued strides in this area. And we'll see what happens next year, but everybody will be talking about it. Okay, and finally, we've talked a lot about young women. Uh, what about the baby boomer generation? You're noticing some interesting trends with those women. You know, these women, this is what I say, that women just keep creating trends and, and setting the path. They're traveling on average about five trips a year. Uh, a lot of it is bucket list, family, or just exploring. And the second one is that women are shacking up and they're re reviving roommates. Why, why live by yourself when you retire? Why live with your kids? You've done that. Live with each other and it's like golden girls all over again. Have community, share the chores, share the finances, and women are doing it. You know, women continue to set trends, which is very, it's, it's exciting at all ages. And even some travel trends, where are women traveling? Well, mostly they're in the United States, and uh, mostly they, they travel in the summer and the spring to Las Vegas and New York and, and Florida. Uh, but women are exploring international trips. They take about one a year, and they partner up with other women. There are tremendous women expos now all about travel. You know, why travel, in, why travel alone? Travel in a group and have a lot of fun with your girlfriends. All right, very good. Dr. Tracy Wyland, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. And we're digging.